Hi, this is Randy from Fried Eggs Golf, and we're here again for another edition of Over Easy. Uh, I just got off of work, and we're sitting down range, but I think I'm out of harm's way here, hopefully. Uh, but before we get to the questions, there is one thing I wanted to address, and it was actually a, a question I was asked a while back, and I wasn't prepared to answer it yet, but I had lost the, the information, the guy's name, but I do know the question existed, so I did want to answer it. So I'll do this off the timer here. But he had asked where I get the music for my channel. And uh, I wanted to let him know that it, if it's not a rap video or me strumming a guitar, it was made by a band called Desert Train. And this is my brother's band, and they give me all my music for free. So I, I do want to pay back and give them credit because they've done so much for my channel and helping me identify myself on YouTube and, and stand out amongst you know every other YouTuber out there. And all the music that's on my channel is completely unique. Uh, it's original, written, and performed by them. I will actually put a link in the description below where you can find their music. If you want to listen to it, like all my intro music, all the music you hear, over my uh, club reviews and everything like that is all done by them. So if you want to listen to the rest of the songs, maybe you're curious to how they, they, they sound other than the 10 seconds that I show or uh, that I play, uh, feel free to go in the description below and check out Desert Train. Once again, uh, just show my appreciation for what they do to my channel. If you guys are interested in, in purchasing the music, uh, it's like a, a dollar a song or something silly like that. So, sorry I, I, I had to do that, but I just... I, I had to give those guys credit. So, without uh, wasting any more time, we're starting the timer and asking questions. Barry Edwards, if you didn't ha have such access to so many drivers as you probably do, and you were given one from a world number one player, would you use it or frame it? Barry, <laughs> I actually know the backstory here, and Barry actually wrote a message to Roy McElroy on Facebook, and Rory actually sent Barry his driver. And this is a true story, you can look it up. He, it's documented, it was actually written in a couple publications, but Barry has Rory McElroy's driver in his possession. Uh, but Barry also goes on to say that he hit it on track, man, and he produces over 4,000 RPMs of spin. And you, you know, should he use it or should he frame it is what he's asking. If you spun it around 2,000 RPMs, I would say use that sucker. And, uh, and, and, and hit the crap out of it. But at 4,000 RPMs a spin, uh, I don't think it's gonna do you much good. I mean, yeah, you got a, a story to tell every time you step on the tee box, but uh, if that was me, even if I hit it well, uh, I'm a Rory fan. I think that he's gonna go on to do really great things. That thing would be in a staff bag right at the end of my couch. And every time someone walked in the room, I'd go, Rory's driver? And they're like, I didn't ask you about it. I'm like, I know, but that's what that is. So. I would, I would not use it. Uh, I base two. Will there be caddies in the Olympics? I'm thinking not, and should, and it should make it very interesting. Thoughts? Uh, I don't know. I think there will be caddies for the Olympics. I can't see professional golfers playing without caddies because they are such a instrumental part in how they play the game, uh, not, especially nowadays. That I, I think that they will have caddies in the Olympics because let's face it, I'm not sure if most professionals remember how to fix a ball mark. So. Uh, and that's probably true too. So yeah, I think there will be. Michael Carr, in terms of swing path, how many degrees into out is too much? For example, do you think someone with a swing path of plus seven with their driver could play scratch golf? Sure, why not? Michael, I mean, in all honesty, it's, when it comes to the golf swing, I mean, it's, when I explain it to people, it's kind of like trying to lose weight. You know, if you step on the scale every day, it can be discouraging and it can kind of deter you from what your real goal is. But I'm telling you, I, I have the best story. I played golf with a gentleman where I hit a 300 yard drive down the middle of the fairway and he's like, great shot. And he was older. He poops this 200 yard drive in the right rough. I hit mine to the center of the green to like 15 feet. He hits his in the left bunker. I lip out my putt for birdie. He puts his uh, uh, his third shot to like eight feet, makes the putt for par. So we both walk away with four. And that round, I shot 36. He shot 34. So the, the and he hit fades, huge fades. So the, it's not all about swing path. You can be a scratch golfer. I know it gets redundant, but just chip and putt. Work on the short game, and and you'll see the the strokes just melt away. Jonathan Caro. Helios, I butchered that. Sorry, Jonathan. But he wants to know, how often do you think it's acceptable to get new clubs? 
Now, when the old ones stop performing, uh, you get make sure that you, you yearly you 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 get some numbers on them and make sure that they're giving you the proper distance, the proper gapping, and just the the proper spin rates and launch angles. But if they work, they work. Hold on to them for as long as you possibly can, unless you just like new things. Uh, Richard McNulty. Are you able to fit yourself or do you need to get a fitter? I currently am stationed in Germany but do not ha am, am not able to find a fitter close to where I live. Uh, I've tried to fit myself and it never works because it doesn't matter how much you know about fitting, ego always comes into it and you'll always talk yourself or convince yourself into something that you wouldn't do for somebody else. So I always get a second opinion, I'll ask one of the guys here to take a look. Uh, and it's it's just better off that way. Now, as far as a fitter near you in Germany, I don't really have any connections over there, but I'm sure someone in the comment section can help you out, uh, help Richard find a fitter in Germany. Alexander Schwartzbart. I bought a Pink Scottsdale TR Sonata B putter with the adjustable shaft on eBay. Now I want it to be regripped, but it's difficult because the regulations concerning the adjustability, so told by a friend of mine. Can the adjustable shaft be removed and replaced by a normal shaft with the length I need so I can put any grip I want on? I actually had to look this one up because I was not 100% sure what was meant by it, but I actually called the ping factory and talked to uh, one of my inside reps there, and you, you're correct. The, it, it is tricky to re-grip these putters. It sounds silly, but the rod that is the extension part is not tapered, so you can actually go against the regulations of what is legally allowed when you re-grip it because of the diameter of it. But anyway, after talking to him at Ping, I mean, if you're if you're playing in tournaments, yeah, it's important. But uh, if you're a weekend warrior, you're out just playing with friends, and they're not going to be, you know, jerks and call you on it. You can just put any grip on there and not put the extra money into reshafting it. But to answer the second part. Yes, you can reshaft it. You just have to find the right diameter of shaft that goes in, and then you can put whatever grip you want on there and not have to worry about, you know, breaking any rules. So, good question. I learned something. Cornwall 888. I think there was a one in there, too. But anyway, should I try to change a flat swing even if it's working for me? I feel more powerful and don't come over the top as much. Yeah, don't let anyone convince you otherwise, either. I mean, if it's working for you and you're playing well, to revamp your swing will just... It'll take a lot longer than just playing what works for you. I mean, look at Ricky Fowler has a pretty fat. Uh, fat. He's got fat. Swing. He's got a flat swing. Uh, I think Ben Hogan was pretty flat as well. So there's a million different ways to make it work. So it, it, the key part of that was that uh, you said it's working for you. So keep it working for you. Jason Semler, my spin rate off the driver is ridiculous. It's like 46 to 5,000 RPMs on his Callaway X-Hot 9.5 degree stock stiff. I've tried to get fit for a new driver, but I've been told it's not worth it to go through the process until my swing improves. Uh, I know my swing needs work, and I don't expect to go from 5,000 to 1,700 from buying a new driver, but how much reduction is realistic? Um, well, I'd say find a new fitter, because that doesn't sound like a guy that's trying to help you get any better. Uh, 4,600 to 5,000 RPMs of spin, I mean, that's a lot of coming over the top leaving the face open outside to in I mean all those things have to be happening pretty drastically to spin a driver that amount but having said that uh find a low spin golf ball let's say uh bridgestone e7 that's a pretty low spinning golf ball there's other ones out there as well uh, i mean it, this is a horrible way to do it because i've never seen you swing a golf club but low loft helps take spin off uh stiffer tip shafts will help take spin off but once again, if you don't have the swing that needs that, you can actually make it worse. So uh, find a new fitter, one that's willing to help you. I mean, maybe just strengthening a grip can also reduce a lot of that uh, left to right spin. But like I said, without having seen you hit a golf ball, it's hard to tell just from shooting from the hip. So Mike Walker, I got fit for a driver and ended up with an expensive Oban Kyoshi Purple stiff shaft. Uh, if I can get a deal on another, would it be worth it to put it in my three wood? If so, do I need to buy a three wood length, or is it the same if I buy a 45 one that, and I have it cut down a couple inches? Um, you can put it in your three wood if the numbers work. If you're getting proper launch and proper spin, yeah, go ahead, put it in there because it will feel similar and you'll be, you know, used to it. And it, it, but if it doesn't work, you might want to look another route. Now, as far as just buying it in a three wood length, be careful with shafts because if you don't buy them 
uncut, a lot of times they could have been cut the wrong way or cut for a driver and you're buying a driver shaft that was cut from the wrong end or cut too much and you can put it in a three wood and it might not work as well. So depending on the trim code that that shaft comes with, because a lot of times they tell you how to specifically trim it and how much for a particular club. If you buy it on eBay, uh, they might have been cut to a length that might not work. So make sure you buy it uncut and then trim it to the appropriate amount. Make sure it wasn't a driver shaft, because like I said, it could have been cut for a driver. Terry Bergen, do you think it is fair that Billy, Billy Horschel was penalized when the wind blew his ball into the lake at Augusta? It seems like a stupid rule to me when it is clearly not the player's fault. Terry, you're right, man. It sucks. And I think if you go through the golf rule book, there's a lot of things in there that you will shake your head at. Like, this is really dumb. Like, in no way does that help the player at all. So why would you penalize him for it? But that's, I mean, that's what kind of makes golf golf. It's It's been that way forever, and it, you, everyone plays by the same set of rules. So is it unfortunate? Yes. Is it stupid? Yes. Yes. Denny Brown, can you explain why I hit the Titleist MB much better than the AP2s I just switched from? I thought I'd, by sacrificing forgiveness for control, but haven't seen much difference in off-center hits. I mean, this isn't that uncommon. Uh... I actually found this when I tested the Wilson irons out. I hit the 100s, which are the blade irons, much better than I hit the F5s, which have a lot of cavity back to them and they're still forged. But it might just be more, the you like the offset amount, it lines up better for you. Oh, that's a timer there. But I think that you're just getting better numbers because you're striking it better and more confidently and it just matches up better for you. But if it, if it works, it works. But it's kind of backwards, but Hey, I've seen weirder things, and like I said, I experienced it myself. Uh, last question is Siri S. I'm going to go one over the timer limit. Randy, how is Bryson DeChambeau able to still generate club head speed and to keep up on PGA Tour while swinging the club with minimal wrist hands or dead hands? Um, Bryson DeChambeau hits it a long way, and he is a big fella. I think he's like six foot two. He's got a pretty massive wingspan. And even though he doesn't have an enormous amount of wrist hinge, he still has a big body turn and he still generates a lot of club head speed. So uh, attacking the ball at the right angle, swinging up, getting the right launch, the right spin rates, uh, a gentleman that large should be able to hit a ball a long way, which he does. So I got through about half of them there. So that was pretty good. So uh, hopefully next week we'll jump back into the rest of these questions in the meantime. Anybody have any more questions, stick them down in the comment section below. Uh, do check out in the description, Desert Train. Once again, it would be my way of showing my brother and his band appreciation for giving me music for absolutely nothing. Even if you just go and stream it while you're hitting golf balls on the range, it would be awesome. So until next time, and I didn't get killed, thankfully, uh, I will see you later.